Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Aurora 4X in the Star Trek role-playing framework, but really spitting off from that. And it's been a long time since the last episode, there's no denying it. Um, I want to address that first. I don't want this series to go the way that the Distant Worlds Universe series went, um, but that's kind of how it's feeling like to me, and I don't know how to work around it. Uh, it's difficult to record this series. Um, it's the most difficult series for me right now, the one I hope which finishes very quickly, is Dominions 4. Um, like per, let's say, 10 minutes of recording time, I probably spend an hour, maybe an hour plus, um, behind the scenes doing stuff, getting ready for it, which is mostly diplomatic discourses, emails back and forth, and some preparation and coordination with ICNU before, but um, that's the worst case, but the I, Aurora series, unfortunately, is actually pretty difficult to record as well, just because there's a lot of off-the-scenes stuff I, I try to make sure I'm researching and know well. It's been a long time. It hasn't actually been that long time since I played a, my, uh, a series of Aurora Effect 4X. I was doing one before I started recording this. It was kind of my inspiration because I was doing it again. But uh, why did, it takes a long time because... I look up the different things that I want to do for an episode, and a lot of times I'm just bypassing time. Um, now, with my schedule becoming tighter and tighter, which is the subject for a channel update, I should, I, it's overdue, but I don't have time sometimes to just sit down. Sorry, really squeaky chair. Why is it so? Uh, I don't have time. If I only have an hour to record, there's no way I can get an Aurora episode in because, well, I need like. 30 minutes of Aurora uh, prep to get 10 minutes of recording time in. So I'm not going to get a whole episode in, and then I push it off. Uh, and then this episode will probably be like two weeks when it's all said and done, because uh, I'm starting to record now, sure, but it's probably going to take three or four more days for me to accrue the other parts of the video that will all come together to make the episode. Anyway, I, I'm not... The reason I'm saying this is just to give you guys an idea of where I am in this series, which is, I really want to continue it, but I am afraid that it'll suddenly just stop because um, my time has very recently taken a, a, a big shift um, away from being free. <laughs> so I just pray that the Dominions 4 series ends and then we'll be okay because that all that made up time I will easily be able to fit Aurora 4X and even the new the to end all war series. Okay, but that's three minutes of talk about nothing Welcome back. It's been a while probably like I said probably two weeks by the time I get this whole thing out um, What has happened? Well, I actually recorded a whole part one. This is the part one part and I designed in that ah oh, gosh, I just had a recording the audio was corrupted. It's not corrupted as in, you know, you can't hear it. It's just that my desktop, I had something going on in my desktop that was recorded at the same time as my vocal recording. It's me speaking twice over myself and it's just, it's impossible. <laughs> so it's, it's corrupted in this sense. Um, and I even looked into trying to like invert my audio waveform from the other audio file, which is me speaking, it's another video and tried to cancel it from the previous, but it's just too much work, so never mind. Anyway, it's, it was fun to do, but... Uh, so here we are, and what I've done in the uh, off-camera time, it's been plenty of months, probably, I, I don't even remember, six months or so. Uh, a couple of research things have been finished, nothing really that exciting. I think we finished... Um, thermal sensors just finished, so now we have thermal sensor sensitivity 32, I believe. And yeah, or that we don't have that one. We have the 24, but the next one up is now 32, same as it is for EM. And now what am I gonna queue after this? Well, I think I'm gonna go with um, the active sensors. Is that what I put down here? Yeah, active grav sensor strength. Um, so we're building up our, our new active sensors will be really strong. We'll have the next tier of EM and the next tier of active grav. Of course, having the next tier of EM also helps if I choose to give those sensors to any kind of exploration ship which might be coming up. Oh, and that reminds me, um, speaking of the discovery, where is she? Phoenix, there she is. 
Um, the Phoenix, I have increased, uh, okay, for real this time, I increased, where is my game file? This one. No, 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 that one. I have actually increased this time the uh, NPR generation rate to 35. I think I'm gonna bump it up to 50 as well. Okay, let's just do 40 for now and I'll save this. That was what I forgot to do last time. So, okay, we're back in it. Great. That's what I forgot to do, was just um, save it. And I'm gonna move it up to 40 because we really do want to discover something. And maybe I, I was thinking I should even go up to 50. And then I was thinking I'll go up to 70 when we get the Enterprise out. Because we really do want to discover an NPR. That's when the fun of this is really going to begin, right? When we get into combat. And I'm pretty sure that despite being the Federation, we're gonna to want to provoke some combat no matter what, it's going to be fun to have an NPR. We'll probably test out with peace, but that's right. Usually what you I do is you test out peace, but you are building up a huge military when you actually encounter them. Anyway, so uh, off camera, another thing, this is the thing I was actually doing off camera, is I decided our hair class, since she now has to pull the weight of the private economy, who is not fulfilling our contracts, as we'll see here, these contracts are not being fulfilled, so I'm deciding to take them into my own hands. So we have the hair, which is, you know, unloading and loading and just maneuvering things around that I really wish the private economy would do. So, looking at the hair, she's not really that outdated in terms of, well, anything. So she has, where's her parts? Da, 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 da. We'll just go to damage control, I guess. So she has the improved cargo handling, and I think that's still my max. Um, the the biggest thing which is outdated is, I mean, probably the only thing which is outdated is just the engine. So let's just go back to our normal ship design, and we can see the 1.52% fuel usage um, at 500 engine power. And what I did is I just decided to look at what would it be like to design another engine if we decided to do another engine, just put this down to like 0.35, uh, put this up to 50, best fuel consumption, and we can see that 560, which is a slight improvement over 500, is half the um, fuel consumption per hour. So basically double the efficiency. That's pretty darn good. And I think the one thing I need to like remember as well is that going down lower and lower with engine power has um, a non-linear, a quadratic effect. I don't know exactly what this is. It might be exponential. Uh, some kind of non-linear effect for the fuel consumption rate. So that's really important since you can also just stack a whole bunch of engines. Now you will eventually, when you get to too low of engine power, run into the problem that um, your you have to add too many engines that the engine mass becomes a factor in slowing down your ship. But generally, because these are freighters and they're huge, you can put very low power, low engine power engines on them and just stack a whole bunch to get the engine power you need for the acceleration, well, not, not acceleration, for the velocity that you want. Because uh, they have like 30,000 tons, or you know, whatever that is in whole size. Uh, let's just say 30,000 tons, uh, do this of freighter type stuff going on. So, you know, adding 10,000 tons of engines is not that big if you have four of these instead of three or two, you know. It, this number is uh, small in comparison to the net, the total size of the ship. And when that is the case, you can go to smaller engine power and it doesn't affect um, the ship speed. Okay, the whole increase for another engine doesn't affect the ship speed as much as the additional power does. So it's, it's a good thing. I mean, there's ups and downs, there's positives and negatives and increases the build cost of the ship, stuff like that, but uh, if you are willing to put, a, put uh, that aside, you'll have a, a ship which is probably faster and is more fuel efficient. So I, let's even go with this, which is actually, a, it's a loss, a loss of engine power compared to the other one, but we're expecting to just add more engines for much better fuel consumption efficiency. Because 480 divided by 560, I mean, that's just going to be 6 sevenths. That's a 6 sevenths increase or decrease, but we got a 5 sevenths uh, boost to our, well, I 
I should say, seven fifths boost to our um, fuel consumption efficiency. And that, does this continue? Yeah, I mean, you can see this is even bigger, probably because there's numbers which are being rounded here, obviously, but um, this is like a, a five sixth, and this is three fifths, which is much different. I mean, big, big difference. So maybe we should even do that. 400. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, these are actually big enough engines <laughs> that they, they do have an impact on the freighters we're designing. Um, this is much more prevalent, obviously, the bigger the freighter is. So if we're building like a 35,000 ton freighter, which is our kind of normal size right now, maybe it is worth it to do this engine. So maybe we'll leave it. I, I'm just going to do this one because we can't go wrong with just duplicating all the stats and just getting purely better fuel consumption rate. So that's the only thing we're changing then we, you know, oh, and, and because the engine technology, this uh, engine power has gone up as well. So we're getting better engine power for less fuel consumption. It's just a win-win. Um, I'm not gonna mess with, so that way if we just add the same number of engines to the next freighter, um, cause this will be my light freighter, then it will just go faster and be more efficient both, which is very nice. So I'm looking over here because I'm trying to grab the date, 2067, November. And that's our commercial engine. So we'll create this. Oh, well, this is funny. I just went through that whole thing about what to do. That is all what I had done in my previous video. <laughs> so what we'll see here is I'm actually designing this 560. It's a good thing I decided not to change it up because that we're already set here. And uh, Dr. Nixon did actually increase his administrative ability from 20 to 25, but because he's only a 50%, uh -oh. huh. excuse me, I uh, I don't think it's worth adding extra labs to him, so we'll keep him at that. This will be finished very quickly anyway. In fact, we can actually decrease this a bit. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at 20. This is where it was before he had his administrative rate increase, and I think that giving him only 20 labs is fine just because 50% um, bonus is better spent on less labs. 60% for bonus for more labs is better, right? Okay, now that is, I mean, that's a lot of what I've been doing is uh, looking at these different things. And um, we now have all these ships that are being built. So we have the, the naming scheme is going to go um, the root class, the class name itself is going to be the first ship. This is misnamed. It won't be 001 anymore. I won't be doing that. Every ship is just going to get its own name. Um, so the first one is the namesake of the class, but then the next one you can see now we have the Corellia, which was Finnish Jaegers. Um, and next up, I think we have the Donager from Harry Coulson. Ah, this series hasn't been really treated well um, with the two weeks gaps and stuff like that, which I'm sure it'll be. Uh, you know, people just fall off. They lose interest, which I completely understand because if somebody was waiting two weeks between episodes, I would lose interest. It's only people who are regular followers of my channel for other content who will probably even catch these Aurora videos, unless it's well in the future and you're catching this entire playlist by itself, which, okay, that's also fun. But, um, and then in which case you won't notice any pause at all. <laughs> It'll all be on the playlist, but. So hopefully I can get these going faster. Now, I'm increasing the shipyard capacity I just want to get these up to maybe 40,000, 30,000, and 20,000. So I have ships at every tier. And then once I get this one up to 40,000, I want a total of four slipways. I want three slipways with the 30,000 and two slipways. It's kind of inverted. It should be the smaller ones should have more slipways in a way because generally the smaller ships are the ones you're building more of. But at the same time, the smaller ones usually build faster and the bigger ones, if you want to build the same number, you need more slipways. So, uh, you know, maybe it should just be the same number of slipways everywhere. Actually, that, <laughs> excuse me, that actually makes sense. Probably just put four a piece for all of them. Uh, anyway, um, so we're just adding capacity, actually. You can see that it must have just happened. It did. So let's do uh, just a thousand here and a thousand here. And this is the reason why our money is going negative. Um, that should short, sort itself out as soon as we stop our um, expansion, our shipyard expansion stuff. And we have a huge bank, so it's not a big deal. I hope I'm not repeating myself. Like I said, I did re record this episode already, but because of that audio bug, 
Um, I'm now re-recording it. I'm, I can't remember what I said on that video versus this one. <laughs> so I'm probably leaving out some stuff and duplicating other things. My apologies all around. Nothing but, <laughs> this is a very Canadian video. Nothing but apologies. So I'm going to cut this first part here. And we'll come back. I, I don't even know what the next interesting event is going to be. Uh, God willing, it'll be the discovery of an NPR, but it might be... Actually, I know what I need to do next. Something that I'm just... I don't know why I didn't think about this until now. I'm going to need to... Um, one of these, probably the unmanned probe, is going to have to be changed. Actually, the Ankara builds what? The Hera. So I guess I will change the... You know what? Maybe... Okay, I did also adjust the industry. We're getting... Since we're going to be desperately in need of missile production, I increased that quite a bit. I'm going to actually pause research lab production after 1.11 more labs. So when we get this number under 10, I'm just going to drop it down. Same way as I'm doing with the other stuff. And maintenance facilities, I wanted to make sure we had enough for our... Uh, our new ships and kind of forgot about it and it's already over 20,000. I'll probably stop this around 30,000. Uh, there's no need for it to be this big even right now because um, we don't have any military ships that are this big and non-military ships don't pay maintenance so you don't need to worry about them. So this is already way bigger than it needs to be. So this will be a very low priority. Um, as it already is 10. So maybe as soon as it finishes off another two and a half, I'll drop it, I'll stop it. And that should be for 24,000. Okay, maybe I'll go to 25,000 and then stop it. Yeah, that sounds fine. So that will make progress on the maintenance stuff. We'll be making progress on the missiles. Um, the automated mines is the duty of the hair to run around. So she'll have some support as soon as we can get. I'll probably, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I wanna build another sieve dock. So let's, let's just create one of these. And let's do this with 20%. We'll get it up the queue a fair amount. I don't think financial is urgent. It'll probably be the next thing that we actually drop in, probably when research and maintenance are one of them. Okay, let's go down to 10% then. When one of those finishes. Okay, but let, let, I don't want to bog down this. I know, so I'm, the trade off is the more I do on camera, the more content I can release, the faster these videos will come out. But it'll be boring. It'll be boring. So I, I much prefer these faster videos, quote unquote faster videos. Um, just, I mean, when they're, uh, I shouldn't say faster, it's it's actually more compact videos. Yeah, where they, they have all the content in there and then I just cut forward to the next interesting thing, which is what I'll do here. I've, actually, I'll do one more click I mean, I'll do one click with us together here, which will be fun. Oh, max six and complete that, which we knew. And I, good. I did assign him one research. We actually need to assign him another one. Should I do that on camera? Why not? What are we gonna do next? That is interesting. I forget what I had queued up even. Oh, it was solid, this one, yeah, okay. So let's go put that one back on the bottom. We also finished 2,000 tons of the naval, naval uh, Davidson Naval Shipbuilding Place. So how are you doing? You're at 35,000. I might just leave that there. Um, and this will increase our racial wealth income. Just leave it right there. So good, I'll put a cut in here. What we'll be waiting for when I come back is to finish the new class, which I'll have to pick a name for in the same kind of uh, theme I've done so far. And then Maybe our naval ships will, I mean, our warships will finish. They're all due the middle of 2068 to the end of 2068. Oops, right here, there it is. Yeah, one in November. That's just the first batch though. We need to do a duplicate batch uh, for everyone. I guess the Washington doesn't need to be done, but we will do that because that's, if we lose a Washington, the only way for jumps to happen will be with the other Washington. So it'd be nice not to have a backup Washington is extremely important just to get people home as like a fail safe. So, okay, that is it. I'll see you back in a moment. All right, well, this is kind of an exciting moment. We are going to send the Phoenix home. I have at this point forgotten how the hell that, how the hell that we can get her home. <laughs> 
I guess I haven't been lining up my uh, my sectors either. That's a mistake. That's okay. We can uh, solve it this way. So I'll off camera have to adjust these things. But uh, oh, by the way, I mean just to give you an idea. Okay. Line up, save positions, I'll fix it later. We need to go to Epsilon Eridani, then to Hector, then to Shaka. So, E-H-S-C. <laughs> That's going to be important when you see what I have to do. E-H-S-C. I mean, probably pretty straightforward. Then it looks like, since we're coming from Shaka... Wait a second... When we're in Centaurus, we'll have a chance to go back to Shaka or to Sigma Draconis. We'll go to Sigma Draconis. Then when we're there, we'll go to Proxima Centauri. And when we're there, we'll go to, well, I guess we can just standard transition. And then we need to go back to Earth for refuel, resupply, and begin to overhaul. So the USS Phoenix has been gloriously out for just about five years, and it will definitely be over five years by the time she gets back. And during this time, she has successfully explored many systems. Um, we only had one system which was really explored or known about at all because of the jump gate um, before the Phoenix came along. And after that, she is the one responsible for just a really sizable number of exploration. I don't even know who we still have in Proxima Centauri. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who the heck is in Proxima Centauri. I have... Oh, I have a PDC fleet. Okay. Oh, I have the unmanned probe, which can stay there indefinitely, really. Well, we should probably go pick that back up and uh, send it off somewhere else, but it's fine. I could probably even just go back and scrap it. Although, maybe there'll be another situation where it's nice to drop a probe through. I mean, I could see a situation like that developing when we know that there's enemies out there. Sometimes you want to see what's on the other side of a jump point before you do it. But I think this un unmanned probe can only do jump gates anyway, so yeah, we probably can scrap her. Um, that's the reason why we, why we were able to get here anyway, right? So yeah, I'll probably queue up that mission as well. Anyways, it's time to send the Phoenix home. She uh, will have a hero's welcome. It's been about six more months almost since the last video, or the last clip. Um, we're pushing forward a good clip here. And let's see. There was something else I wanted to say. Not research-based. Uh, but I don't remember. Let's see. We have soul. Oh, yeah. Let's just check on the update of our shipyards. We've reached the final capacity for Davidson Naval and Connolly Shipbuilding. So now all we need to do is get to Hall, Howells and Collins when that dock is also complete. Uh, we're just upgrading ship uh, slipways. So this one, uh, both of these are in the process of being expanded, but it's going to take a really, really long time. So well, that's just the way it goes. It's fine. What else? I guess that's it. So the, just a quick update, and then I'll bring you back in. Oh, shoot. Did I forget to take off? No, we still have. This is the very last research lab we're going to build, and then away with her. And then we can get a new commercial shipyard, which is going to be necessary, because actually, you know, that's what we'll do in the next clip as well, is we'll finish designing the next uh, freighter, which I, I'm not prepared to do right now. So I'll probably see you back very shortly, as soon as I get my act together. I'll, I'll probably do it when the Phoenix actually arrives. As she has, by the way, the Phoenix had a few failures um, lately. Let's see, there it is. Like most recently, a gravitational sensor was fail uh, failed, but it was easily rebuilt. Nonetheless, for having a five-year, I mean, for the five-year mission, she is in pretty fantastic shape. We can see that her maintenance supplies is still like 80% full. I mean, obviously you don't want this to fail and have an engine fail and not be able to get home or whatever, but uh, it's it's good. We haven't wasted too many maintenance supplies, which you actually do have to take out of your pool on Earth. So I think our pool on Earth has over a thousand still. I think I built it up at some point. Let's see, how many maintenance supplies do I have? 
Yeah, 1800. I did build it up a little bit. So we're doing okay there. We'll be able to draw from that supply to get the Phoenix. Um, it's going to take a little while, though. I mean, quite a little while. Let's see. Over a year or so before the Phoenix can travel out and explore new places because um, the overhaul is going to be only at a 3 to 1 rate. So for the five, call it almost six years that she was out, it's going to take two years to overhaul nearly. So that'll be pretty significant. Anyway, like I said, we'll do the design of the next freighter, and then we'll probably be able to just call this video to a close. So I'll see you back for that in a sec. Okay, so it's just been a couple weeks, not very long, maybe a month. Uh, we hit a new research uh, innovation. We have the tier six Gauss cannon stuff starting. Better missiles are possible now, but I'm not gonna redesign the ones we, we just started producing. We're gonna let those continue to roll off the production line because uh, I'm probably, I mean, there's no sense not to design a new missile. Uh, when you have a, a missile upgrade, it's really easy to just to replace the old ones. Basically stop producing what you're building right now and then just make it so that your um, ships are gonna be using those miss the new missiles instead. But I, I'm i just gonna be lazy and not do it. Also, um, I have a very huge announcement about, I, I have a really good idea for how this series should go, which is gonna help us get back on track and it's gonna be uh, some people may like it, some people may not, but I, I, I came to this conclusion between the last recording and this one, and I, I really feel comfortable with making this decision. Okay, so anyways, uh, in this episode, we're going to try to continue and get this next one out. And that's really the only thing I need to do in the near future. Basically, the next thing we're waiting on is to find alien life. That's the next step. Uh, we've kind of dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's. Um, so, anyway, let's get to the designing of the ship. I already took the liberty of copying, copying the Hera, because we're going to be able to reuse most of the Hera class. Um, we just need to do stuff like uh, new armor, which is going to have some small effect. Let's see. Oh yeah, that uh, took off 700 tons, which therefore increases the speed. Um, I don't think there's much else we need to do besides... Are we going to need to improve the cargo handling system? I have no idea. Yeah, we have advanced cargo handling now, so we'll, we'll use two of those instead. Yeah, why not, right? It's just going to double our cargo. I mean, load time of six hours is just fantastic. And actually, wait, do we, did we already get the gravity-assisted one? No. Gravity-assisted cargo handling, I think, is the final tier of cargo handling systems. But uh, I guess we're not there yet. Okay, so and then the standard cargo hold is what we'll be using. Um, eventually, you might consider doing, like, you can make long or big freighters, bulk freighters. This is just a normal freighter. It's not a bulk freighter. Do they have a bulk freighter class? That would be really nice if they did. They do not. But this is just a normal freighter. I mean, which handles <laughs> items in bulk already, to be fair, but... Uh, when you get one with like 10 cargo holds on it, I, I call that my bulk freighter. So it's going to be very slow. Um, you have to make it fast enough to at least catch up to the planets. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. But All right, so this new hair class we've done so far. What did we do in ancient African Union? We did the Sonia. Uh, that was our freighter. And then the Osiris was the complementary um, colony ship. Then we did the Hera, which is our current freighter, and that paired with the Ankara capital ship or colony ship. Now I, I'm just kind of debating what to do. To jump off the screen for a moment, what to do? Should we get a new colony ship? I don't think so. I don't think we need to. Our current existing Ankara is sufficient for anything we need to do, which is basically just getting places started. All we need to do is land one person and that place is now a colony where the civilian population will just gradually flock to. So you can think of this as we need to send a team to set up a planet to be inhabitable by others. And then with the confidence that the government has already landed, knowing that of course the stringent measures we've taken to make sure there's not um, a repeat of the disaster at um, Proxima Centauri, um, at Terra Nova, 
then with all these things, we just let the civilian population take over, start moving there on their own with, like I said, trusting that once the government has landed anyone, everyone else is free to join. I'm not sure if that was going to work out that way, but mm. I think the uh, civilian economy does prioritize colonies and all that pretty highly because they haven't moved my darn stuff, <laughs> which is the whole reason why we're making the next class. Okay, so we have the Hera. Select the name. Uh, so last we had the Ankara, which means we're down to Argentina. Okay, so looking through this list, I'm going to name the next freighter the Mar del Plata is uh, Silver Lake or Silver Sea. That's a beautiful name anyway. I think it makes sense uh, as a freighter, a hauler of goods. So, and I, I knew a girl named Mar when I was living in Spain. So <laughs> this, this goes out to her, although there's like less than a 0% chance. <laughs> okay, fine. A 0% chance she'll actually ever listen to this kind of video, but that's fine. So Mar del Plata, it's our new class. We have the advanced cargo handling. All we need new all we need to do now is trade off these engines for the better ones. So we're looking at right now fuel usage, a range of 350 billion, which is enormous, and 2100. Or let's call it 2200. So we're looking at 2200 and a range of 350. 2200 and a range of 350. We definitely have to obsolete some of these, my goodness. Uh, I need to obsolete this component. This one, this is the one we were using, but now, wait. Oh, I guess it's been a while since the era <laughs> should have been retired. We had a different one. I think that's the identical one. Well, that's a, a mistake. I'd already made a better one, but that's fine. We're going to obsolete that one now, just so we don't have to deal with multiple designs. Okay, so now we have our newest military engine, and then we have our, our newest commercial engine, which are both inertial fusion drive. This is great. All right, so let's get this into practice. That's really um, you know silly of me, just not to have checked that I already had an engine ready, but that's okay. So... I can't, what did I use it on? I must have used it on one of my explorer ships. Because I, I, the Hera class doesn't have it, and that's my latest freighter. Uh, okay, well, that's fine. Well, how many, well, we want three of them. Let me get three, and so we're at 2,400 versus 2,200, and this is the big thing. 720, my goodness, this is just enormous, right? We could even consider reducing this down to just two large fuel tanks. 720 is just, uh, that's just enormous. Okay, what I think I'll do is actually I'll just boost our speed by adding a fourth one. Okay, so now we're at 3,000. That decreases our range a little bit, but we're at 3,000. We're over 3,000, which is nice. This is a good speed for a freighter. Um, and we still have over 600 billion kilometers of range, which is good because we may in fact need that to do well, I don't think yet we've gotten to a point where we need that much distance. Let's just check the galactic map. Um, there's a way for me to uh, talk about distances. Uh, da, 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 da. No, no, distance from selected sector, there it is. All right, so let me just click here, or here, I guess, Seoul. So we're only 31, it only takes 31 um, million kilometers for us to get to Epsilon Indy, the furthest place away right now. Uh, as you can see, we're nowhere near the even 100 million to make this. Well, I guess it is 60 million to make this a round trip. And then, you know, if you need to actually stop off the planet or whatever, that's, that adds a lot more. So we could do at this point about eight round trips from Epsilon Indy to Seoul with our new freighter. And that feels good. I think that feels fine. We probably are, are overkilling it, but I'm, it's just a single very large tank. They're pretty efficient to build because it's just one big tank rather than like multiple smaller tanks, which would be a lot easier just to say, okay, let's knock off one of them, but can't really do that in this case. So, so there it is. That is going to be the Mar del Plata class. I don't think there's anything else we should change.
Uh, it just has all the minimum stuff that you need for a uh, conscript. Good. Yeah, for a civilian ship. Okay. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. I really like it. And then we'll call this the Mar del Plata, or sometimes just the Mar class. And okay. So the next thing we have to do is actually get our shipyards to build them. And that means that this unmanned probe, which obviously is just unimportant anyway, we can actually expand this uh, one. Ah, we don't really need to though. So I'm just gonna have this one retool for the Mar del Plata. Again, just being content with the Ankara for any of our colonization needs. So we'll retool for this, set activity, and that's it. So this will be done about the time our first warships will start pumping out. Yeah. So that's gonna, that's it. That's the thing I wanted to accomplish in this video. Um, so we'll probably call this video to a close. But I wanted to put this out there. Right now, we're at a lull in the action, especially because the uh, Discovery is gonna have to come back, right? I mean, the Phoenix is gonna have to come back and repair. What I think is a good time for me, it's a good time for me to kind of put a break in the series. I, I, I'm gonna say specifically like a two week break. That's what these episodes end up being anyway, but we're getting really close to finishing both the Rule the Waves and the um, uh, and the Dominions 4 series. They're, they're coming, they're very close to being finished. And once either of those is uh, finished, I can really focus back on the Aurora series. So what I plan to do is to move forward in time, maybe even five years or so. We'll have the warships out. Um, we'll have m some more technology finishing, which is not really that important. Or maybe it'll only be like two years or so. And then I'm going to get the uh, Phoenix right back out there. Maybe even upgrade our percentage chance to 50%. Let me just do that. I'm just going to say I'll do that right now. So let's go over here. Uh, let me close this. And game info. Let's go to this and make it 50%. And then if we still, for whatever reason, have not encountered an NPR, uh, then I'll, I'll raise this to like 70% or 80%, uh, just when I get the Enterprise out at the end of, at the end of the century. So that's my game plan. And this is because I want, if I'm able to do that to take a break, because I can put this on the side and I, this is something I didn't do with Distant Worlds and I'm seeing like upon further reflection that it would have saved the series. So if you're watching this in the future, you'll just be able to move on right on. It will probably, I mean, I'm sure it'll be the same playlist, but it's going to be like a, the start of a new series almost because I'll do a complete summary of everything that has happened in the next episode. And it's going to be hopefully a point at which people who weren't following the series or who fall, fell off the series at some point along the line uh, can jump back in. That's the idea here, is that if you fell off the series and you know, you're know you not interested or whatever, you can come back in. We hopefully will reinvigorate the Aurora series, which is kind of falling by the wayside just by... Um, uh, I, I think that m me, mo more than anyone, it was, <laughs> it was losing a place in my schedule and everything which is partly related to my like professional stuff, which is going on right now, which is really kicked up. But that's my idea. Hopefully that's going to be okay because I'm just going to make that decision so that we don't have any ambiguity about what's going to go on with the series. So I'm going to take like a two week break with this before the next episode comes out. I plan to do like a recap of everything that's happened. So it could be more than two weeks. It could be. Um, again, just hopefully waiting for Rule the Waves or Dominions 4, one of those two to end because those are the two most likely to end. And honestly, those are the two that take the most time besides Aurora. So if one of those two ends, then um, I will have more space for Aurora. I'll do that recap in the beginning, and then we'll hopefully... Uh, it, it might even be really exciting. It might be the point at which NPRs are discovered that I can start off the new, the new episode, the next episode as. That would be great. So um, I'll fire this episode out. Thanks so much for... Wow, if you watched this far, like... Uh, Considering leaving a comment, this is going to be, I'm going to consider this like the pseudo end of the series. Uh, usually at the end, the last episode of any series, I, I like to say, you know, if you made it this far in the series, go ahead and leave a comment recommending anything you want as a future series or making any kind of comments. I'll just take them, I take them very seriously for people who are like the core audience, right? The people who are actually dedicated to 
watching this content for whatever reason. <laughs> so, all right. Anyways, thanks for watching. And until the next episode, which will be slightly in the future, um, take care.